this morning and uh, acknowledge the incredible contribution that uh, A-Time has made when it comes to helping young couples be able to realize their dreams of having children. I was one of those few Rabbanim who were there from the very beginning, going back many, many years, so that were asked to lecture at some of the earlier uh, various types of conventions you had to deal with this. And over the years, the way this organization has grown and the success that it has demonstrated is something that the Jewish community should be very, be very, very appreciative of. I want to thank the founder and the president, Rabbi Shua Rosen, for having had this chalom, this dream that he brought into reality. And his dream allowed many other young people's dreams to come to fruition by being zochut to have kinderlach through their activities and through the various things they've done to allow the medical community to interact with you and to be able to have the ability to cure you, heal you from your problems. Tura College is very proud to be a shoot of a partner in this project this morning. Uh, I'm representing Turo. I'm one of the deans of this school, this building that you're in. And uh, Baruch Hashem, we're very proud to have a chilek, a part, in this specific assemblage this morning and this afternoon. Dr. Alan Kadish, who's the president of our university, would have been here personally, but he is in a different part of the United States today. But he wanted me to wish you Hatzlach and Brach and all that takes place that you should succeed in your endeavors. Tura College has a particular interest because based upon the configuration of our university at this point in time, we have approximately four different medical schools, two nursing schools, two PA schools. I can go on and go on. We were cited recently of perhaps being the greatest health educational provider in the United States. So we're very into trying to help educate people when it comes to medicine, educating the doctors and the future nurses, also educating the people out there at large when it comes to people who need medical services, who to go to, and how to deal with the problems that confront them. I therefore feel that we have a major chalak, a major portion in today's assemblage. And I just want to share with you a little concept that I have that might set the tone for what's going to be going on the rest of the day itself. Chazal tell us that when it came to Bria Sa'ula, when it came to the creation of the world, God himself created the world, but he created it up to a certain point at which our Chazal tell us, our sages tell us, that man was then mandated to take this world and become a partner with God, a shut b'Hashem b'Masabreshis, to take the creation to the next level and to give it completion. Chazal, however, in order to make this concept even more tangible, more concrete, point out something quite interesting and quite fascinating. If you go to the first mitzvah, the first commandment in the Torah concerning the mitzvahs God gave us, the first mitzvah happens to be the mitzvah of Peruvu, bring fruit to multiply, the mitzvah of creating children. And what's interesting in this mitzvah, when it comes to the phraseology of the Torah, the Torah says, Peruvu milos aretz v'kivshua, we have to fill the earth with children, with, with young neshamas, but it also says we have to conquer the world. We have to conquer the world as well. Kibbutz Sha'ola. And the Ramban, in his interpretation, the Torah says something quite interesting. What is the meaning of Kibbutz Olam conquering the world? At that point in time, there weren't any nations to battle with each other. What does conquer mean? So the Ramban says conquer means to conquer the natural resources and the wisdom of Hashem and Master Barashas that he has implanted in the world for us to be able to research it, to find out what it is, and to be able to apply that knowledge of science and natural law God has created and apply it to help and benefit mankind on every level in which we possibly can. Quite obviously, when it comes to kibbush olam, it applies to all types of medical and scientific technology. But what is interesting and fascinating is God made this phrase connect directly to the mitzvah peruvu of creating children. And it's as if, in certain respects, the Rabbi Shalom said, if you're going to use modern technology for the purposes of helping mankind, there's one area I want you to concentrate in in particular, and that is the concept of fertility, being able to allow couples to be able to produce children through the utilization of medical technology that becomes available as time goes on. There's no question that when it comes to the concepts of halacha, when it comes to the questions of the interface of medicine and halacha, there are perhaps more responsa literature written when it comes to infertility shalos than perhaps any other type of chalak, any other type of portion of rabbinical literature, 
We are Ashrainu Matov Chakainu, the Rabbanu Shalom has given us Kedolei HaPoskim from all sides that have taken the modern technology that's available today and have given us the halachic perspective of how to deal with it, how to utilize it, and how to make it beneficial for our purposes in order to give us the schus and ability to produce children if we can't do it naturally, to do, do it in, in, a, in a very special way of manipulating nature and allowing us to have the schus of having children. In our religion, we believe that even though Hashem created natural law, we have the right to circumvent and manipulate natural law for the sake are performing mitzvahs for the sake of basically coming closer to the Rabbanu Shalom. Many religions in this world do not allow that concept of manipulation of natural law. Therefore, many of the procedures you're going to be discussing today and many other peoples of the face of this earth, they can't take advantage of it. Once again, Ashrein Matelv Chalkeinu HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us the ability to be able to use natural law on every, every level, to sometimes supersede or manipulate natural law for the sake of being able to be able to have children and do other mitzvahs of the Torah. And therefore, the purpose of this little convention today is to give you familiarity with the major medical advances that take place in all types of medical technology, both in the analysis of why, technically speaking, people cannot have children, what the medical world has devised as a way of circumventing these impediments and giving the proper diagnosis, prognosis, and various types of care when it comes to treatments for the various problems, you're here to be educated and be told what's available on the marketplace for the purposes of having the ability to have children. If you can't do it naturally, to do it this other way and to be able to make kind of mitzvah pruvu at the end of the day itself. It is a tremendous chus for us, once again, to have the ability to house such a conference. The, the concepts of infertility, I'm very involved with personally because I am a rabbinical counsel for a time going back from time of antiquity. I teach medical ethics throughout my 30 years of career in various universities, first Yishu University, now in Turo, and I've interacted with health professionals who was training to be health professionals, giving them the background. When they're going into the field, especially if they're Jewish, to know exactly what Torah says, what the Judaism says about how medical technology can help them in a medical career and how they can share their expertise in medicine with their patients who come in front of them. I therefore have a special nachas, a special pleasure to be able to be here, to be able to see people partaking of this type of education. I pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu as we start the assemblage today that Hashem should give us the ability to be able to do what we have to do, that Hashem should have His Shechina, His Divine Presence, rest upon us, give the doctors the intuition as they make their presentations to say the right things, to open up your hearts and minds and make you realize there's an answer to all the queries and problems that you have. And that God should grant us the ability to be able to have the ability on a medical level, scientific level, to have every couple who wants to have a child to have the ability to have a child. You should increase the parameters and diameters of all our knowledge in scientific phenomena, especially when it comes to these specific areas. And as time goes on, God has given us that blessing. How, how much has taken place in the development of art and other types of technologies over the last couple of years? We should be able to reach that level that every couple wants to have a child should be able to have a child. And the doctor should be given length of days and the concept of the ability, the health, and the mind, and any creativity to develop methodologies to help all those who want to have children. May the will of God be that we're able to mekayim all of these various haftachos and promises and hopes and aspirations. Thank you for coming today. I'll give the program over now to Rabbi Rosen so we can begin with the actual medical educational program, which is the purpose of today. Thank you.